they little realized the impact their company would have on genre films as the coffin lid slowly creaked open to reveal new versions of Dracula, Frankenstein, The Mummy, and Werewolves, all in shocking color. They brought back the famous monsters, the classic monsters. Um, they hadn't been any for a while from the 50s. They all changed to the big bugs and the, the giant monsters. Hammer brought back the Frankenstein, the mummy, the classics in color, uh, which I think a lot of fans were waiting for. You had splashes of blood or brains in jars and eyeballs, and that thing was, was in the context of that time period, was extremely shocking, extremely daring. The Italian filmmakers and other foreign filmmakers, uh, and also here in America as well, but uh, they saw what Hammer had brought to the table, which was a lot more flesh, a lot more blood, we had a lot more plunging necklines, we had a lot more just uh, upfront gore, um, and suddenly it was like, okay, you know, the gloves are off, and it kind of just gave, it gave uh, the horror industry the shot in the arm that it really needed. In 1951, Hammer signed a four-year contract with American producer Robert Lippert to produce a series of films for distribution in England and the United States. Hammer shot mostly low-budget mysteries and crime films such as 1952's Terror Street with Dan Duryea. I'm an American, a pirate, and I'm in real trouble. It was decided that an American actor would headline the pictures. He thought he was helping a pal, and from that moment on, found himself the target for murder. 